In this Grasshopper tutorial, I want to model the true shade tiles in Grasshopper, and as you can see, I can change the model and will produce random patterns. Uh, for those who don't know about the true shade tiles, you can search this in the uh, web, and I'm going to show you the quarter circles in this tutorial. You can see basically the tile is made of two set of tiles, which is this circle, and let's just make this as blue, this circle, and we're going to put them in a randomly pattern to produce the true tiles. They can also be other tiles. You can see here we can play with the triangle on a pattern and produce different patterns. Again, we can also use a single panel and then rotate it randomly and produce those panels. You can search this in, uh, in the Google image. You can see that you can produce different patterns or you can even produce products. Uh, here you can see that there is also a 3D printing game you can play with and I'm going to put another video uh, just a little bit further so you can see how Trusha tiles can be also used and it's a really interesting topic. So what we want to do is to model this in Grasshopper uh, from scratch and I'm going to make this, let's just go from scratch and make this in Grasshopper. So uh, let's just delete this one and zoom in. What we want to do is to produce a cell. Uh, we can just produce a rectangle or square cells in the x and the y direction. This is the first step. So I'm going to go to the vector section, the grid, and pick up this square cells. So let's just put this here. I'm going to use the bifocals plugin so you can see the names and here we go. Okay. The plane is definitely an XY plane if you want to work with the XY plane. So you can also give another plane. Let's turn this off. The size of the cell we can just type in and we can define how many cells we want in the X direction or in the Y direction. So I'm going to put this here and here so we can control that. Okay, so if you just look out for the squares, I've talked about this before, you can see that they are in groups, so let's just change that. So you can see that these are cells are in 25 groups of 12 cells. So they are basically, these are the rows of groups we have, and we don't need these groups, so what we have to do is to flatten down and we have talked about this. If you don't know about flatten or graft, I'm going to put a video up here. So what we want to do is to flatten those cells to have all the 300 rectangles or squares in one group. So what I want to do is to first randomly have two set of panels. Uh, one will be these panels which will have this pattern. So this is really easy. We want to pick randomly some of the cells and put this pattern on it and then we will have another cells which we will put this pattern so it's going to be this one okay and we can just draw this and this will produce the pattern so we need two set of cells what I want to do is to type dispatch again we have talked about dispatch in a tutorial I will put it up here if you want to know what dispatch means but what we want to do is to let's just go to dispatch give it here. You can see this is a true-false pattern, right? So what it means is that it means that it's a true-false, true-false. Let's just put a surface to this so you can see the results. I'm going to put this list A, okay? It's going to be true-false, true-false up here. So what we want to do is to give this a random pattern uh, for a true-false. So maybe this is, a, uh, assume that true is 1, so this is 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. So we will need a random pattern. We can easily do that by producing a random with this icon, as you can see. You can also find it in the sets here in the sequence section, random. The range is between 0 and 1, which 0 means false and 1 means true. 
So I'm going to click on this and use the integer numbers because we don't need a number between 0 and 1, right? We need a 0 or a 1. So I'm going to just use this integer numbers. And the number, the number of random values we need is the number of these cells, 300. We need 300 different 0 or 1s. So what I want to do is to go to the sets and use this list length tool. This is a really good tool if you want to just count the cells. So if you give the cells into the list input, it's going to say it's 300, the number or the count of the data. So I'm going to give this to the number, and you can see that's going to produce 300, 0, and 1s. So let's just put a panel to this so you can see this. OK, so these are the 0 and the 1s. And the seed is a number you can just change and produce different randoms. So we can just make from 1 to 1 million, doesn't really matter. We just have to change the seed, let's just zoom here, to produce different numbers, okay? Different distribution of 0 and 1s. And now if we give this to the dispatch pattern, you can see that some of them are going to go to the true and some of them are going to go to the group of false. So this is the way you can use it to dispatch the patterns and you can see that we can just simply just change the seed and produce different patterns. Okay, assume that we want to work with these cells, the list A, just turn this off, we can just turn the cells off. What we want to do is to produce this pattern, right? So what I'm going to do is to go to the curves and use an explode to explode these cells into four different segments. So these are the four segments we have, and I'm going to use the sets list item to pick up those segments. So I'm going to click this to the segments and zoom in plus, 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 zero. Okay, let's just type this zero, one, two, and three, right? So this is zero, one, two, three. We have these edges. What we want to do is to simply draw a circle or an arc here and here for all of these cells. So I'm going to go to the curve section and use this point on curve tool. So I'm going to pick up the center of this one and the neighbor edge, which is this one. Now we can go to the curve and draw an arc SED or a start end direction. That means we give this as a start and this one as the end. Then we give the direction. It's going to draw an arc, right? Or a, a arc SED. So this is really easy. What we want to do is to give this as a start, this as an end, and the direction from the start is going to be the Y direction. So I'm going to give this as a Y direction. And here we have this arc. Next, we need this edge and this edge. So we're going to copy this and give it to the edge 2 and 3. So it's going to be here. So if this is the start, this is going to be minus y, right? So this is simply just give this the direction, same the y, but we need a minus in the expression section, minus 6. That's it. So we will have, let's just turn this off, and the points. So we have this pattern in these set of cells. Now we can just copy this and go for the next set, which is the list B. Now what we want to do instead of this pattern, we need this pattern, right? So the edge 1 and 2, so let's just make this edge 1 and 2, and when we just give this to the edge 1, we have a minus x, so it's going to delete this, give this an x, a minus x, right? And the next one is going to be here, so it's going to be the third and the first, so let's just make this third and the first, and this is going to be, if we just draw this, it's going to be in the x direction. So I'm going to give this and delete the minus x, and that's it. So now we can just turn everything off, turn only these arcs, 
and we're good to go. We can simply just change the seed and produce different patterns. So the next step is that to give them thickness, I'm going to connect all of these curves or the, all of these arcs together. So let's just go to the curve section and use this join curve tool. And we have to flatten this because we want all of these curves in one group to be joined. So I'm going to use the shift key hold down the shift key and connect all of them. Now if I just bake this, you can see that we have these connection, right? Now what we want to do is to offset these curves. Okay, let's just give this a number. And because we want this curve to be at the center, we have to have a minus and a plus offset so we will have a thickness. So I'm going to copy this here and give this a minus six so I have a minus distance for the offset. We can turn this off and here we go. Now what we want to do is to connect these two. We can simply use a loft, use the shift key to connect that. Okay so now what we have is the loft of this and we can extrude that, extrude that into z direction and produce that true shade tiles with extrusion and it's going to make a, make the algorithm a little bit slow but if you want the extrusion this is the way let's just zoom in in the shaded mode and we have the results here we go you can see that we have the pattern so this is really easy if you want to produce that and you can just change the random if it's going to uh, study the pattern, what I prefer to do is to just turn off this loft, disable this, try to play with this random, see the pattern, and when I'm good to go, we can just change the numbers here, change the seed, and at the end when we are okay with that, we're going to enable and have that in thickness. So this is a way you can produce the true shape tiles, in Grasshopper and I'm going to also add two different methods. One which is going to be, the second method is going to be a way you can make this with two set of patterns. As you can see we just have this and produce that. This is going to be another advanced tutorial so you can use this and we are going to add this into the course for the course members and then we are going to also give this third pattern which is basically another pattern with the triangles. So this was the way we just dispatched this and here we go. We can just produce this pattern and produce true tiles in Grasshopper. That was really easy just dispatching and producing those arcs and playing with the curves. Okay thanks for watching. Remember to like this video, comment below and see you next time. <music>